So welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And if this is your first time visiting the channel, we appreciate you stopping by. If you like the content, throw a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So in today's video, we start part two of armadillo trapping. So if you're new to the channel and wondering why we're trapping armadillos, this isn't for fun, this isn't for anything else. We have 50 acres here in North Florida and we have a major, and I mean major, armadillo problem. So they're digging holes and I'm talking holes like you've never seen all around the property and especially out in my pasture. Some of these holes are this large around, they're dens basically. You can stick your arm, leg, whatever down there. So the big concern is as we're developing this property and getting more toward animals, if we don't get a control on this armadillo population, we run the real high risk of animals, especially out in that pasture, falling into these holes, breaking a leg. We're talking about getting horses. My wife wants to be able to run those out there safely. Plus, as I'm out there mowing, I'm having major problems with tractor tires falling in some of these holes, but mainly the smaller mower tires. So this is starting to really beat my equipment up and cause damage. So I decided to build an armadillo trap. I just released that video not long ago and I kind of struggled, but I had always heard once you catch your first armadillo, <clears throat> that sets the trap up. And then I have been told you just start catching them very easily after that. Well, I'm very hopeful about that. This is what part two is going to uh, try to figure out right here. We're gonna let this go over many days, maybe a couple of weeks of trapping. So I caught my first armadillo yesterday. Released that video showing me building this trap right here that's made just for armadillos, and I will be. I just come back out this morning, the doors are down, just peeked in the hole, we already have another armadillo. So apparently the scented trap theory is correct. All right, so let's get this borescope down in here and see if we can see this guy. And there he is. Actually, he's curled up and sleeping. The one I caught yesterday, I come out here and found, they are nocturnal. So I guess whenever they know it's daytime, they will actually conk out in there and go to bed. But here is our second armadillo. Now, if you're interested in this trap, I'll put a link down in the description and put a video at the end if you're watching on YouTube and you can go back and see how I built this. But this episode is gonna be about testing some theories, trapping in different areas, and I really, really, really wanna find out does the scented trap box, is that the holy grail to armadillo trapping? Right now, we're off to a good start, especially to have caught two, two days in a row. I should also mention, I threw some dirt in the bottom of this trap, so as they get in there and lay down and do just what this was doing, waiting for me to come, open the doors back up, it's sending up all that mud and dirt in there. And these things smell so weird. Whenever I got the one out of the trap yesterday, I don't know how to describe the smell in there, I guess with the wet dirt and mud and it's sending it up, it almost smelled like seafood. If you've ever been to the coast and smelt seafood, crustaceans, things like that, it is such a unique odd smell. And apparently armadillos are highly attracted to other armadillos. Let's find that out. Let's keep trapping, let's keep recording. All right, so I just eased by down there and the uh, doors on the trap are down again. Wow, I don't know if we got anything or not. I did not look inside. We're about to go figure that out. All right, so the good news is I did have my camera back out today. So we should have some sort of footage here. Oh no, we got something. Another armadillo. Trap has caught three armadillos in three days. So the theory of a scented trap, I'm saying is 100% true right now. When I set the trap the first time, wide open, just trying to blindly funnel an armadillo in here, just after I built it, took two weeks to finally get lucky and get one in here. After that one sending it up, I have been catching them day after day. It definitely works.
All right, so I have pulled the armadillo trap and brought it back to the shop. We're gonna make one modification to it that I think is gonna make this thing just about as foolproof as it possibly could be. Now this is the wrong tool for the job, but I'm not about to pull out a bunch of tools to make one cut. And I wanna try out this Shopmaster bandsaw that a viewer just gave me the other day. If y'all haven't watched that episode, you should. I'll include it at the end of this or put it down in the description. But I had a couple of viewers generously donate, donate me some really nice saws and tools, a diesel transfer tank, like just amazing experience getting to meet nice people. I'm excited about having me a bandsaw in the shop. We're eventually gonna get this shop set up for woodworking and metalworking. Cannot wait to do that, but that'll probably be closer to fall. But we don't need a, a really accurate cut for this. Let's run this thing, see if it'll work, and uh, zip this piece of wood through here. I got an old scrap piece here. This is what's gonna be our floor that'll be on hinges. And if animal steps on this, I think we got them. We're getting away from that stick trigger. All right, let's make a mess on my bench top. Let's see what happens here. Man, that thing didn't even hesitate. Awesome. Well, here is our floor. And don't forget, this whole trap is just a concept right now. I'm using this as a test piece before I build several more, and I already see several modifications I wanna make. Like, for example, this floor, and I think I wanna make the trap a lot smaller. There's no point in having it as big as it is, and as expensive as wood is. The smaller I make it, the more I can build out of a piece of plywood. Alrighty, so I picked up these two hinges at my local farm and supply store. They'll work just fine for what we're trying to do here. So now we can mount those to the bottom of the trap and I can elevate this floor up slightly. I'm about to drill a hole through it here, run the string up to the trigger. So anytime something steps on this, well, the weight pushes right down the weight of the body of the animal. Armadillos are quite heavy. This shouldn't have a problem pulling a trigger out up top. And it doesn't matter if they walk in from this way and stand on it, or if they walk in from this way, they're gonna step right up and step on this to go through and exit the trap. So either way is gonna work just fine. Let me drill a quick hole in this thing. Okay, nice and simple and going to work beautiful, I do believe. So if you can see in there, I've got a platform screwed down and it pivots on these two hinges. String ran through the board up to a very smooth nail. And look at here, hopefully this makes sense. So I've got an overhand knot in the ropes that go to both of the doors. So right now they're wanting to drop and they're putting pressure. Got this eyelet here. So when I tied an overhand knot, I left a loop like this. Stuck the loop through, ran the nail through the loop. So now anytime there is the slightest pressure down there on that board, these doors will drop because that nail would just slide right out of that loop. I mean, very easily. Allow me to demonstrate. I'm gonna put the slightest little bit of pressure on this false floor, watch this. I mean, I barely touched it, barely touched it. I may even have to work with the trigger some. Now here's the thing, if it winds up pulling through uh, too quickly, I can roughen the nail up, make it catch on there. I can put a spring in there on that board. I can modify this any way that I want if I start getting too many false trips. This is gonna work right here, no doubt in my mind. Getting away from that trigger stick was the right thing to do. So we're about to go set this right back. I've already got all those nighttime cameras down there running, ready to go. And I have a feeling we're about to catch a lot more stuff, maybe more than armadillos. Anything that goes in this box now is probably to trip it other than maybe a mouse. I'm hoping the rats don't, but we'll see. All right, moment of truth. Let's head out there and see if our newly designed trap was successful. Uh-oh. It looks like the doors are down. Look right there. Look right here. This is the problem, y'all. 
I have so many armadillos. Y'all think I have a problem now? Jeez. I know what you're thinking. I don't have, I don't have the right one with me. <laughs> this is crazy, and the trap doors are down. What the heck is going on around here? Why do I have so many armadillos? <laughs> Y'all are not gonna believe this. Of course, I didn't have the camera rolling. So I decided to go back to the shop and grab something, Freedom Stick, to take care of a couple problems that we just seen on camera down here. So one goes off into the woods over there. It's gone. I'm watching it walk away. I can't get you know a clean shot off on it. The other one is right up in here. Well, I get a clean shot on that one and take care of the problem. I'm literally standing right here just took care of one you got one out here in the woods and out from underneath this tin comes crawling another one out two to three feet from my feet they're just coming out of the woodwork I, I can't I can't believe how many there are so I got two out of three right there and I have no idea what's in the trap this is crazy y'all so now that makes at least 22 armadillos that's been taken off the property and i'm just going to say the last 12 weeks and as y'all can see it doesn't like i put a dent in them that's how much of a problem we have by the way all up around the house this morning i woke up ate my breakfast was doing some youtube editing and you can look all out in the yard and see where there was some all the way up there last night i've got fresh sign underneath my building where they're starting to dig again i i have no idea how many's on the property could be could be a hundred or more i just have no idea Regardless of how many we have, we have too many. Yes, we have to live in nature. Yes, we have to live with animals. I get it. But sometimes some things can go unchecked and you can wind up with a serious problem. So here's something interesting. Check this out. This is not how I left the trap. The door has been opened up right there and there's dirt all around the edge. There's dirt all around that hole. So we've got a bigger critter in there. It has managed to pull dirt up everywhere. At least, I think. I'm wondering if we might have a raccoon being that things have been opened. Don't tell me we have nothing. May have trapped some mice or rats that knew how to get out. There's nothing in here. This is interesting, and there's a ton more dirt. Don't tell me these armadillos figured out how to get out. Now, if I trapped a raccoon or something, we're gonna have some pretty cool footage to go back and watch. If I trapped a raccoon, I could see how they could probably figure out how to get their little fingers and thumbs underneath the door and lift up and get out. And I'm actually okay with that. I'm not out here trapping raccoons, I'm trying to get an armadillo. All right, well, the doors are down, so let's see if we've got something in there. All right, hopefully y'all can see that. I did not bring my little uh, <clears throat> borescope down here. But we do have an armadillo in there. That's his shell right there. There you go, see a little bit of it. Big guy, big old fish. Trapping these animals is just kind of part of life around here. Some people may not understand why, but I'm telling you, I've already taken, now I think this brings me up to 25 armadillos that I have taken off of our piece of property in probably the last, it's been less than three months, 25. We obviously had a problem. You can see when I come down here the other day, there's just armadillos everywhere. They're literally crawling out from under stuff. They're just digging potholes and holes everywhere i found some more holes the other day that was about the size of a of a boot i mean you can literally trip and fall over in it they're back up to digging around my barn again so even with me taking 25 i have not put 
as big of a dent in these as I thought. Now I will say that the digging is better around the house. Last week, I didn't see digging maybe one or two nights, whereas before that, every single night dug up all around my barn, all around my house, all around my shop, just dug all up. The field's looking a little better too. But now that we have a design that seems to be working, I know what I'm gonna do on the next one. So I guess we will have a part three eventually. I'm gonna go build two to three more of these that I can set around the property to try to put a further dent in this issue that we're having. I'm gonna make them smaller, easier to handle, and come up with a whole new trigger system as you're seeing here. I'm even gonna play with the design that I just did, but I think we can make these to where they are just about foolproof. But to answer the question, does a scented trap work better than a non-scented trap? Absolutely, that is key. You gotta figure out how to funnel and get your first armadillo in your trap. Don't dispose of it in the trap. Supposedly that ruins it. And then get your trap centered up. I've been throwing dirt in mine, just little shovelfuls of dirt. These critters are nasty and they'll wall around in it all night. Now the dirt stays centered. And next time I build some new traps, I'll take some of that scented dirt right out of this one, put right in my fresh new traps. Now they're already pre-scented, ready to go. I think that's gonna be key. For everything I'm reading, you can't bait a trap with nothing other than armadillo scent. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.